Uh, I came to digital from film photography and spent years in the black and white darkroom, uh, but when the digital revolution changed photography, uh, uh, I, I, I jumped on it, and because uh, I'd always done special effect type work, uh, both for myself and commercially, and so when the computer came along and uh, the digital imaging uh, processing software, which is all a Photoshop nowadays, it just shortened the conduit between idea and the mind. Uh, and the uh, image on the paper. Um, uh, I, having come to this from film, I've got a huge file of uh, 35 millimeter transparencies, mostly Kodachrome, and I began by scanning those, getting those uh, into the digital form, and working with them, and then outputting them. And this, these are uh, archival pigment prints. Uh, so Gicle is the French word meaning spray ink, means the same thing. These are done on, on Epson printers. Uh, using pigments, uh, and so I don't have to worry about uh, light or enlargers or uh, dark rooms uh, uh, anymore uh, because it, it's all a digital file that's uh, printed digitally. Um, although the, the digital printer does require babysitting, and, uh, it, and each one is essentially handmade by me in my studio with the aid of machine. My, my uh, technical process isn't as complex or as good as what Rich does. Uh, but uh, this is pretty much the, the future of photography. And the, the one thing I, I really appreciate about the, the non-silver process is, is uh, there's very few practitioners of the art anymore. And, uh, as, uh, and silver printing is going away as well, being replaced by uh, inkjet. And uh, I, for one, I never thought that the black and white uh, a digital print would ever uh, come close to the uh, handmade silver gelatin or non-silver prints. And uh, it has now. Um, there's still a tactile quality, especially in the non-silver pr process. And when you hold the thing in your hand, there's a depth and a luminance uh, to it uh, that uh, is, is very, very special. Uh, but having said that, once that goes in a mat and is presented under glass, it, it's very difficult for the untrained eye to tell the difference between the two. The black and white process is uh, digitally done uh, equal to, uh, to film. Um, the non-silver processes uh, have their own kind of flavor to them, and uh, I'm glad to see that uh, there's people that are still doing this, because as photography becomes more and more digital, uh, this sort of thing is going to become more and more valuable just because it's going to be rare, and fewer people are going to be making them, and there's going to be less of it out there. And so uh, uh, where uh, Rich is working in a, in a very traditional uh, 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 medium uh, that is uh, has an established value and will always have that value. Uh, this over here, um, inkjet prints were originally looked at as impermanent things, uh, as proofs, uh, and uh, finally, as the technical processes have gotten better, the museums uh, are now accepting this as, as a valid uh, medium uh, to, to present art on. And the pigments are archival, and if they're they're not abused and uh, not uh, uh, exhibited in uh, you know direct sunlight or uh, stored in the, you know very humid or polluted atmospheres, these will last for a long, long time too. Uh, the question remains uh, whether or not my negative, which is uh, encoded uh, on a CD, is going to last as long as the prints. But uh, that's something that uh, time will only tell. Yeah. I have a question. With your print, is that, is that just a four-color process? Uh, it's a, using, it's a, a, I use an Epson R24 <laughs> for everything you see here, and it, uh, it's an eight-color ink. Okay. Uh, and, um, and initially, uh, in digital, uh, uh, the dye printers had the widest gamut. They had the, the, the widest range of colors. Uh, and uh, the dye printers were beautiful, uh, but the, the dyes are impermanent. Uh, those were uh, superseded by pigment prints, but the first couple of printers, like the Epson 2000P, <coughs> the pigment prints didn't have the scale that the dye prints did. But as the pigments have been improved, um, I don't, uh, the only dye printers that are left are inexpensive, like office type printers. These photographic printers, uh, the pigment inks are, are very, very archival. And it's you know an interesting uh, thing to mention that only the technical artists, like we photographers, ever get asked questions about long-term storage. I know plenty of painters that don't even know how to properly prepare a canvas, and no one ever asks them if their paint's going to flake off the canvas in 50 years. 
It, it's like we are held to a higher standard because we use more technology. Oh, paint on plywood. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always interesting. Uh, if you're interested in any information about long-term storage of uh, photographic materials, uh, look up Henry Wilhelm. Uh, he is uh, the guy who uh, does all the long-term accelerated aging tests, and uh, it's his data uh, that we believe. We don't believe Eastman Kodak because they always tend to be overly optimistic yeah. with uh, long-term uh, uh, keeping information. But Henry Wilhelm, if you uh, look him up on the internet, he's got data on just about everything there is out there. Uh, and that seems to be an important thing for collectors of uh, photographic and now digital art. If you guys have any questions, just speak up because I don't, you don't want to just blather on about what you don't want to hear about. Oh, yeah, please. Um, so if you have any questions for either of us, either about process or about motivation or about, um, you know, our pets. <laughs> <laughs>